In what ways are Elon Musk and NASA similar? Both of them are keen on sending people to Mars. The billionaire and venture and space race competitor Elon Musk has had to slow down. This is because NASA has uncovered a huge discovery on Mars, which will have a significant impact on its plans for planetary colonization. So, what exactly has NASA found on Mars? As Musk says, how does NASA's discovery figure into my plans? Welcome, and you are watching Technology Zone, where the home of technology resides. Join us as we investigate the recent groundbreaking finding revealed by NASA on Mars and how it may impact Musk's ambitions. The best brains of SpaceX and NASA are working toward the same ambition of landing people on Mars, proving the cliché that great minds think alike. However, the two organizations operate on different timescales and ranges. While NASA plans to send two humans to Mars in the 2030s, Musk would like to send many more people to the Red Planet as soon as reasonably achievable. However, Musk should pay close attention to NASA's latest Martian discoveries since they may have a direct impact on his goals. NASA has put in a lot of time and money studying Mars since it's such an intriguing planet. In all, NASA has sent five rovers to Mars, Sojourners, Spirit, Opportunity, Curiosity, and Perseverance. Our horizons have widened as a result of this. However, as NASA's rovers have progressed in sophistication, it has become abundantly evident that there is still plenty to discover about Earth. Only two of NASA's five rovers, Curiosity and Perseverance, are still operational at this time. NASA is unable to send a person to Mars at the present time because the agency lacks the resources to adequately prepare astronauts for the harsh conditions they would encounter there, such as the planet's high radiation levels, difficulties with gravity, and the lengthy journey there and back. Rovers, however, enable NASA to investigate Mars at reduced cost and without putting any people in danger. As part of NASA's Mars Science Laboratory MSL mission, Curiosity landed on the Red Planet in 2012. The rover is still the biggest one of its kind. Curiosity is 7 feet or 2.2 meters high, 10 feet or 3 meters long, and 2.7 meters and 9 feet broad. Despite its diminutive appearance in photographs, or say it has SUV-like portions, Curiosity has been exploring Mars since 2012. It has traveled over 16.8 miles or 27.04 kilometers at rates of up to 100 feet per hour. But obviously, it isn't constantly in motion. Rather than relying on solar power as its predecessors did, Curiosity has a radioisotope power system that generates energy from the heat of decaying plutonium. And even amazing selfies can be taken by the rover as well. The primary objective of the Curiosity's rover mission on Mars is to assist scientists in establishing whether or not the Red Planet ever hosted microorganisms. Curiosity has been quite productive in this way, with several findings changing how scientists see Mars. Scientists believe that Mars had a climate comparable to Earth's billions of years ago, but the surface is now too harsh for life to exist. There was more liquid water pouring into rivers and oceans, and the air was denser. A liquid state of water is required for all known forms of life. Thus, organic carbon and similar compounds are hypothesized to have provided sustenance for Martian life. How has our natural inquisitiveness helped us in our hunt for Martian life? The answer is that carbon, as it seems, is essential to life. Hence, each time we find a substantial carbon signature in an environment like on Mars, it may indicate the presence of life. In any place where there is life, you will discover carbon. Nonetheless, carbon comes in a variety of forms. While all carbon atoms have six protons, their neutron counts are more flexible. Isotopes are forms of carbon with a variety of neutron counts. There are three naturally occurring isotopes of carbon, C12, C13, and C14. Only C14 is radioactive. The other two are stable. There are six neutrons in C12, seven in C13, and eight in C14. In living things, C12 is the most prevalent form of carbon. It has nothing to do with food metabolism or photosynthesis. As C12 contains one less neutron than C13, it forms molecules with fewer bonds than C13 does under identical conditions because of this difference. So why are carbon isotopes even a topic of discussion? Well, it's due to the fact that something like this was found in the Gale Crater of Mars. Before we continue, may I ask what is your knowledge about Mars that you have so far? 
Comment down below and I'll certainly read your feedback. Curiosity has been operating in Mars Gale Crater since 2012. According to experts, sediment at the lake's bottom was created when volcanic rocks were subjected to physical and chemical weathering. Besides, the presence of carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur in the Gale Crater is the point of attraction to researchers that looked for indications of life on the planet. The rover has dug into the crater rocks and taken a powdered sample, which it has stored in its onward chemical lab. SAM, short for Sample Analysis on Mars, is the name of the laboratory. What then transpires inside SAM? Here is where pyrolysis is used by Curiosity to break down the material and produce methane. And to avoid contamination, the pyrolysis takes place in a stream of inert helium, and the gas is then studied using a tunable laser spectrometer to determine which carbon isotopes are in the methane. Researchers working on Curiosity analyzed 24 samples of rock and made a monumental discovery. There was a higher proportion of C12 to C13 in 6 of the samples. By comparing the Gale Crater sample to the C12 or C13 ratios observed on Earth, they concluded that there were almost 70 ppt more C12. Carbon on Earth consists of C12 with 98.93% and C13 with 1.07%. What does this imply, that said? Quite simply, if similar findings were to be found on Earth, it would indicate that the living activity caused the high concentration of C12. That's why we were so thrilled with the finding. On Earth, things function in this way. Microbes living on the surface of the Earth released methane into the atmosphere long ago. Methanogens are prokaryotes that belong to the archaea domain. Methanogens are still present on Earth particularly in anaerobic wetlands and ruminant digestive systems, as well as in other severe conditions such as hot springs. As a byproduct of their metabolism, these bacteria release methane into the air, where it is oxidized by the sun's rays. However, the end result of these reactions seems to be more complex molecules that would fall into Earth as precipitation. Once an organism reaches Earth's surface, its carbon trace is retained in rocks. Curiosity's discovery at the Gale Crater on Mars may be easily explained if the same mechanism had occurred there. However, not all experts agree that this is the only possible explanation for what the Curiosity rover discovered in the Gale Crater. The theory of molecular clouds is one example. We think that our solar system may have been affected by a molecular cloud many millions of years ago. There is evidence to suggest that this phenomenon occurs around once per 100 million years although its frequency cannot be precisely determined. Hydrogen molecules make up the bulk of the material in molecular clouds. Curiosity found a form of carbon in the Gale Crater, but the one we are referring to might have contained a more significant concentration of it. The cloud's cooling effect on Mars, along with glacial ice, would have prevented the cloud's molecular carbon from mixing with the rest of the planet's carbon. If anything, it would cause C12 concentrations to rise. Despite this, it is still worthwhile to investigate the molecular cloud theory. The second theory has to do with UV light. Carbon dioxide makes up more than 95% of Mars' atmosphere. According to this theory, it reacted with UV radiation to create new carbon-containing molecules that eventually precipitated on the planet's surface and were incorporated into rocks. You may have noticed some parallels between this and the methanogenic process. One is biotic, whereas the other is abiotic. Researching Mars' carbon cycle is one method scientists are attempting to determine which of the three possibilities is most plausible. However, Curiosity will keep studying rocks and measuring carbon isotopes, and eventually, scientists will have a more significant opportunity to investigate the minerals of Mars and the materials acquired by NASA's second rover, Perseverance, once they reach Earth. Musk has a particular interest in the origin of the carbon isotope discovered by accident. Some Musk-like science could be there, but other than that, Elon Musk might be intrigued for different reasons. He hopes to establish a human settlement on Mars. Musk's long-term goal is to establish a Martian colony. He is preparing to transport up to a million people there for a new existence on Mars. The Musk-led team is building a new Starship rocket with Mars colonization as its primary goal. Many aspects of the two-stage rocket will facilitate Musk's goal. For instance, since it is fully reusable, it will drastically cut down on the price of sending persons and goods into space. 
as many tons of resources must be sent from Earth to Mars, affordability is of utmost importance. The Starship also makes use of fuel that could, in theory, be manufactured on Mars, guaranteeing that enough fuel exists to return the ship to Earth. Musk has set a goal of delivering the first people to Mars by the course of this decade. Therefore, he demands that the SpaceX team work day and night to finish the Starship, and he hopes to get funding from SpaceX's Starlink satellite internet venture. Unfortunately, Mars is very hostile, so Musk will have to terraform the planet before human colonists can call it home. The goal is for Mars to be just as livable as Earth. The absence of a protective atmosphere is a significant issue for people living on Mars. However, Musk has proposed a notion that we all agree is insane. Nuking the poles Musk suggests that a comparable atmosphere to Earth's may be created by blasting the poles of Mars using nuclear rockets. The entryway of SpaceX's Texas headquarters has a picture of a terraformed Mars, courtesy of Elon Musk. At that point, the only equipment people would need to bring to Mars would be respiratory apparatuses. Share your thoughts on the feasibility of human settlements on Mars in the common space provided below. And if you found this video informative and exciting, consider giving it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, hit that notification bell to be constantly updated with our upcoming videos. You can visit our channel for more content of the likes. And again, this is the Technology Zone. And see you guys in the next one.